future. Absolutely. So um, thank you and I appreciate the opportunity. And while uh, he's switching out slide decks, I'm going to just introduce myself. My name is Maral Patel. I'm the director for the Center for Innovative Learning at Wake Med. My responsibility is to oversee all of the technology-based educational programs that we have throughout the system. And as you can imagine, healthcare is this very complex and crazy environment where technology is constantly changing. And so I'm tasked with figuring out the best and most creative ways to ensure that our, all of our employees are, are educated throughout that process. So I'm going to start with this slide, which is one of my favorite. So one of the things in healthcare is that we always thought something was the right way to do it. So let's go back to the 18th century. And there are a couple key things here to look at. One is it looks like they're pouring water into this poor guy's chest. Right? In the 18th century, the theory was that in patients that had tuberculosis, the only way to decrease the disease process was to remove the oxygen from the body. So how they did that was they created pneumothoraxes, so they created a hole in the chest wall, poured water in it, decreased the lung size, thus decreasing oxygen, and the idea was it would kill off the disease. What we once thought was the right way to go has obviously dramatically changed. Today, we want to get rid of holes in lungs. We want to get rid of issues in the chest. Our goal is to fix that. So 19th century, adventure of, uh, of antibiotics, and today we completely change our mindset and our, our thought process. Healthcare is this complex and crazy environment, and it's competitive. It's highly, highly competitive, but the unique thing with healthcare is that it's hard to standardize the process. In a normal shopping area, there are maybe a thousand charge codes associated with uh, any given um, ailment. In healthcare, there are millions of charge codes. There's not one way to put a stent in. There's five ways, or 10 ways, or 15 ways. But what is the right way for that individual patient? It's not about the money. You know, in old school, it used to be always about the money, or is it about the people? That's always a good question that always pops up. For us today, it's always about the focus of doing what is right. In today's healthcare market, there's something called accountable care organizations, and we're held accountable for the care that we deliver. Well, how can we be held accountable if we don't know what that care delivery process is? So much of for us has changed over the years to a focus on innovation and technology to the extent that even our aspirational goals today focus on that innovation process. So we're changing the paradigm in healthcare education to focus on that innovation principle. They look at six domains of medical practice, and what's interesting here to look at is that medical knowledge, professionalism, interpersonal skills, practice-based learning and improvements, and patient cares are all dominating this, this domain. Teamwork and communication account for 90% of the errors in healthcare. 90% of the errors. Something as simple as somebody talking to somebody else can result in a fatal error to occur. So how do we change that process? How do we change that mindset that we must communicate? What we live off of, the model in healthcare education has changed to is something called Kirkpatrick's model. And all of us are familiar with the Kirkpatrick theory. We put a spin to it to add a healthcare element to it. For us, we look at levels one, two, and three quite frequently, but then level four pops up as a result of the Accountable Care Organization or the Accountable Care Act, where how does that change professional practice and what benefits, what direct benefits occur to the patient? And how do we chance that? Oftentimes, the first time we know there's a benefit is when that real patient leaves the hospital or leaves that environment. How do I test that process to make sure that it's there? To accomplish both the domains and the Kirkpatrick's theory, we, we sought out to look for changing a couple things, culture, needs, and gaps. We wanted to identify the gaps that were present. We want to understand the needs in the organization, and arguably we have to change the culture and the mindset. In medicine, for years, it was physician-focused. The doctor was always right. In today's healthcare practice, it's team-focused. Not everybody, everybody in the room has to understand the process and the plan of care in order to change that process and procedure that's there. So we had a focus on safety, and that focus on safety really looked at feedback, repetition, range, individuality of learning. All of us learn in different ways. How do we create individual learning plans to ensure that you're successful in your career? We have seasoned providers. We have new students. We have people that, have just, uh, that are still going through medical school and medical process, but we have to make sure that the entire team understands those vast differences in procedures. So we leverage technology as that. So what you'll see here is a vast array of stuff. And I want to introduce to you um, this piece of technology here in the bottom right-hand corner. That's a human patient simulator. Just like you and I, 
He breathes, he blinks, he pees, he poops, he screams, he yells, he pukes. What goes in does come out, <laughs> right? And so he has an artificial circulatory system. The unique thing with him is I can do just as many procedures on a robot as I can on a real person. So think of it this way. Imagine that you have an abnormal heart, and you're getting ready to have a very, very dramatic heart procedure done. You're the first patient that doctor has ever done that procedure to with that dramatic of a condition because it is that rare. Do you want to be the guinea pig? So we leverage the idea of 3D, robot, of 3D printing and robotics to be able to replicate that entire process. Imagine being able to stent that heart for the first time in that environment. We're able to treat the patient, understand the physiological impacts, and then understand the long-term implications of that care that were delivered all in a robotic environment. The unique thing here is that we do this in an inside to or in a, in a developed. So on the, in, at the main campus of the hospital, we have a 10,000 square foot virtual hospital built out focused on that education. We take the technology out into the street, bring it back to the hospital, it doesn't matter. So a lot, there are lots of opportunities and option. We're obviously in an area where we have Sharon Harris right around the corner. Um, and so one of the things we're also required to do is drills face focused on radiation exposure and management. And so you can see just the leverage of technology and the team practices that come into play. We are able to decipher processes, um, improve patient outcomes and care. Again, focus on teamwork and communication and processes. And so the unique thing with this environment is we're able to make errors without ever harming a real patient. We can solidify those processes to ensure that we're all safe at the end of the day. So just some neat, neat technology. This is being integrated. You're seeing this more and more in schools across the country. One of the neat things that we've started to do with a lot of this technology is we do a mini med school every year. And the mini med school focuses on your seventh through 12th graders, so the high school focus. The idea is to introduce them into medicine give them the tools that they need to be successful if they want to get into medicine. So we give them a little bit of anatomy and physiology, a little bit of mat med math equations, a little bit of CPR, a little bit of surgical procedures. They get a little bit of everything. Some love it and some hate it. So the folks that don't like it have an opportunity to be able to change their topic or their focus or what their career goals are early on in their career. So just a lot of different opportunities leveraging technology. But this saves lives. It saves countless lives across healthcare systems. And that would be my last slide.